You all remember Brave New World, where every time anybody raised their voice, they were given a, a gram of soma and told a gram is better than a dam. And so nobody ever had a thought in their head. Well, that's a terrible drug. Let's not introduce that. Uh-oh, the bad news is we've had it for decades. It's called television, you know? <laughs> We have millions of people in larval, low-awareness lives in their little condominium apartments just ladling this garbage into their minds. The average American watches five and a half hours of TV a day, so imagine how much time these people watch. I mean, to, to think of that as human at all, if that were a drug, we'd be up in arms. You know, if people were loaded at home with that level of mental condition day after day after day, we would, we would do something about it. <clears throat> what, what can we do to, make, to ameliorate our situation? Well, I have always been an optimist. I'm more optimistic right now than I have been for a long time because sometimes when you're an optimist, you're an optimist simply on principle. You believe it's going to turn out all right, but you don't see how it possibly could. I'm beginning to see how it possibly could turn out all right. Iliad wrote a book called Shamanism, and then he subtitled it The Archaic Techniques of Ecstasy. Now, he wrote the book in French. In French, technique, has a connotation that it doesn't have in English. It means both a way to do things and it means technology. Later, the French sociologist Jacques Ellul wrote a book called Propaganda. And the little banner under which his book flew, which is printed right on the frontispiece, is he says, there are no political solutions, only technological ones. The rest is propaganda. And then he spends 200 pages explaining what he means by political solutions, technological solutions, and propaganda. By Ellul's understanding, I agree. I think ideology is toxic. All ideology. It's not that there are good ones and bad ones. All ideology is toxic because ideology is a kind of insult to the gift of human free thinking. I mean, if you adopt some ideology, Leninism, Mormonism, it doesn't matter, then you have all the answers. You just go and look in the catechism. Well, I don't know why they issued you a brain. They could have just given you the catechism. Uh, <laughs> Technology, as the counterpoint to uh, ideology, is a very different animal. Now, right now, we're going through a technophobic phase because people think technology means exploding nuclear power plants and, uh, you know, irradiated food and t TV. But all technology really means, in the McLuhan sense, is the extensions of man, the extensions of man. And so language is a technology, shamanism is a technology, psilocybin is a technology, and certainly the internet is a technology. It's inconceivable that Western industrial capitalism could run on another 500 or 1,000 years uh, it, it will not continue as it has. It will deteriorate under the pressure of resource scarcity. And what few democratic values we have obtained, what little space for reasoned discourse has been created, will be the first to be swept away. So it's, it's very, very important that people take back their minds and that people analyze our dilemma in the context of the entire human story from the descent onto the grassland to our potential destiny as citizens of the galaxy and the universe. We are at a critical 
turning point. And as I say, the tools, the, the data that is, holds the potential for our salvation is now known. It is available. It is among us. But it is misrepresented. It is slandered. It is litigated against. And uh, it's up to each one of us to relate to this situation in a fashion that will allow us to answer the question that will surely be put to us in some point in the future, which is, what did you do to help save the world? here. How's everybody doing? It's been a while since I've done one of these. I actually released a video uh, a couple weeks ago. It was an hour and a half. It was really great. And uh, it talked about ideological subversion. And this was the idea that it's a communistic idea and it's the idea that you can program a society if you place enough fear into the society and you can indoctrinate uh, a society of people through subversion by indoctrinating them into a lie, essentially. And so the video, oh my goodness, we're really crooked today, aren't we? And so the video opened up that can of worms and it did a really great job of it, but YouTube deleted it within I would say about 10 minutes of my posting it, they must not have liked some of the memes that I had, <laughs> which weren't very nice to big corporation and big government, big institutions, group mind, this kind of thing. And so it's unfortunate that I haven't been able to release that. I released portions of it on my Facebook page if you want to check it out. There's some good points made, but today we're going to be covering a bit of a mm, uh, more controversial issue and that is what's going on and I think a lot I think a lot of people wonder what really is going on right now and I don't I certainly am not gonna and I don't claim to know what's going on I am just another pundit in this whole thing and I'm offering my opinion and you can do with it as you wish. I certainly don't claim to be right. So what I'm gonna share with you today will hopefully give you a larger perspective and just offer you another reasonable option about what is happening. So I'm gonna open this up with a story. And what I wanna do is for you to picture in your mind this image, this I, the, this world that I'm going to put into your mind, and what I'm trying to do is juxtapose the world I'm going to put into your mind with the world that you're actually in, okay? And I'm going to, I'm going to juggle these two things around, and hopefully by my talking about these two things, it's going to open your eyes with perspective of the current now, what's happening right now geopolitically, what's happening right now with the society, with our food, with our biology, with all of the medical stuff that's going on. 
I'm gonna try to offer some reason to all of this, seriously, reason to all of this, that will help bring some understanding, because I know a lot of folks are confused. One of the key things to remember as I talk to you today is that the critical aspect of the Great Awakening is that we all, all of us, including me, all of us awaken to new ideas, new perspectives that are sometimes com completely antithetical to the ways and means and indoctrination that have been put into your mind. And so in order to grow in the Great Awakening, you have to be willing to grow. In order to throw the ball, you have to be willing to let it go. Okay, and so if anything is going to be accomplished today, as far as opening your perspective, you are the critical element to that happening. I can't convince you of anything, and I'm not gonna try to. What I simply can do is share with you perspective, and then it's your choice if you wanna grow. If you wanna consider that perspective, juggle it around in your mind and see where it goes. Okay. So to understand the world, as I've said many times before, you have to go back in time. If you're gonna ever understand why you're sick, you have to go back to why you became sick. And until you do that, it's like pulling weeds. If you don't pull the root of the problem, the root of the weed, the weed is just gonna grow back. This is the way you work biologically, this is the way nature works, this is the way society works. Because society is a byproduct of nature, meaning a byproduct of human beings, and human beings are nature creatures. Okay, so what you have to understand is what has happened has been organic in the sense that it has developed from basically how the human race has responded to the evil pressure that's been put on it. And so if you're gonna understand how we got to this situation, you have to understand the root cause. Okay, that's what I'm gonna try to do today and as I tell this story, you're gonna start to, some of you are gonna pick it up instantly. Others of you are gonna be like, Where the, where's this going? Just hear me out, okay? All right, so let's say like, you're the new sheriff in town of a major metropolis. Let's say you're the governor, really powerful figure. And this metropolis that you've been in charge of or that you've been put in charge of, been uh, voted into, this metropolis is, is rife with evil. It's rife with crime, it's rife with assaults, it's rife with murder, it's rife with bribery, all of the judicial systems are corrupt, all the police forces, all the, the, the people in charge of that stuff, they're all corrupted. Everyone's bought out, okay? Everyone, the mob has come in and just, they've, they've completely bought everyone out. There's no justice to be found. And the most hideous aspect of this metropolis that you're now in charge of, the most hideous aspect is that this group of people, this mob that's running this metropolis, has infiltrated one of the psychiatric wards and they're using the psycho patients to go out and commit crimes for them so they can't get caught. So the, the people who are actually the bad guys are actually not performing the crimes in the city. They're orchestrating them from behind the scenes through this psychiatric ward. So it's really enmeshed and complicated and uh, intertwined. Like there's, it's, it, the whole thing is knotted really badly with this corruption, this corrupt group, this corrupt mob that is running the city. Okay, so you as a governor, what you wanna do is you wanna get rid of all the crime, you wanna get rid of all the evil, but you don't want a bunch of collateral damage. Right? You don't want to harm the good families and the people that are trying to live a good life and earn an honest wage and this kind of a thing, raising their family, raising their kids. You, you don't want to harm those people. But they're all in the city. 
So it's it's like if, if the city was totally corrupt and there wasn't any of those people, you could literally just bomb the thing. And it, you know, you could you could get rid of it that way. You could you could bring in special forces. You could line them up on top of the buildings and just, you know, anybody that doesn't walk out of the building and give themselves up is shot. You know, so you could you could forcefully go in there and do that, but the problem with doing that is you're going to have collateral damage because you've got psychiatric patients that are walking around the city committing crimes. It's a it's a really messed up situation. But you you have to bring healing. You 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 have to do your best to bring healing to this really tragic, horrific situation. That's your job. Okay? How do you do that? How do you go into that city and bring about renewal without killing half the good people? Because they're intermixed with it too. You've even got good people that have been bribed. They, they're not even bad at their core. It's just that they have been bribed. They've been put into a situation. They've been coerced into a situation they never intended to be in. Say they were taken to dinner and were drugged. And so they're completely out of their mind. And the, and the people take them to the criminals, take them to their house, take pictures of them doing horrible things while they're under this drug-induced mindset and so you've got all kinds of video on this person who's actually a good person who would have never done that unless they were drugged right but they're now they're now under the rulership of these people because they have video of them committing crimes even though they were totally drugged up you see so it's really difficult you couldn't even get say it's a dad of a family you couldn't get that dad to turn on his own kids and his own wife he would continue to try and bury it because he would he's caught up he's in a really really bad situation well that's all in the city too you see you've got a real problem on your hands so how are you going before this mob completely takes over the entire city takes over all these innocent families and turns it's basically becomes Sodom and Gomorrah okay how do, how do you resolve that you can't vote the system out, all the voting is corrupted, right? You can't bring in the cops because all the cops are corrupted, meaning their leadership's corrupted. They won't obey you. They won't do as you say. And the officers who work for that agency, they won't do it unless their instructor or their, their lead tells them to. Their captain tells them, right? And if the captain is compromised, he's not going to help you. And everybody at the psych ward is compromised. All the leadership there is compromised. What do you do? What option do you have? Really? Because you can't use the systems within the society, within the metropolis, that are established to get rid of the refuse, to get rid of the crimes. All those systems are corrupted. What do you do? See, you can imagine this in your head, right? The only way you're going to resolve this is by slowly, methodically, and carefully dripping out the truth to all the families, the innocent people, and the people that don't know about all this crime and corruption that's organized, right? They just think it's random crimes on the street. They don't realize that it's truly organized from the top. You're going to have to slowly educate those people so that then they join you in fighting against the mob. What other option do you have? And so you begin, as the person in charge, you then establish your own force of people, a group of, of your own empire, basically, secretly, that you're going to use to begin to drip truth into the society, into the, the metropolis. And little by little, more and more and more people become aware of what's going on. Let's say like it's 10% of the people in the metropolis are totally corrupted. It's totally crime. The whole thing, right? Let's say it's about 10%. So you got 90% of the people that aren't corrupted. You got 10, 20% that are running the whole thing. 
by educating the people. Sorry, there's someone driving weird in front of me. By educating the people, they then become a force alongside with you to overcome the evil. There's a there's a um, theory in Sun Tzu's Ancient Art of War that says there is strength in numbers. Meaning if you have an army and it's just simply of a greater number than your opposition, you have better odds of winning. And if your army is of a greater number by thousands, there are thousands of you for every one of them, right? There's power in that. This concept, right, is central to understanding what's going on in the world right now. And as I've shown you in videos in the past, and if you go back and watch some of my videos on Luciferianism and, and human origin and the Great Awakening and Christianity, this kind of a thing, you will then, I will clue you in to some of the slow drips of truth that are percolating into the society, into our society. If you want to understand what's happening with the madness of this world, think about the madness I just described in that metropolis that you're in charge of. Don't you see, as you look around the world right now, a similar kind of madness happening, whereby you're seeing the most unbelievably crazy crimes, behavior, psychology that you've ever seen in your entire life. I grew up in the 70s. The world right now is nothing, nothing like it was when I was growing up as a kid. It's far more profane. And the, and the criminals are just putting the crimes right out in front of you. you we have, we have uh, people that drive cars through uh, parades where there are little children. And we've seen these crimes. It's, it's so incredibly insane. It's like we're all in a mental institution. It's like the Twilight Zone. Literally, I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for Rod Serling to show up at my door. Literally, I mean, you could he could show up at my door and tell me you're in the twilight zone. I'd be like, yep, totally am. I completely am down with that. <laughs> you see, it's that crazy. And this is because those that have been in charge have mentally preyed upon the society. They have indoctrinated the society with, with false sciences, false religions, belief systems. False medicine that's actually harmful to people. It doesn't heal them, it harms them. False media that is communicating all of these lies constantly to the people. You have those that are governing the society spreading nothing but lies. And I can't share those lies on this video because they shut my video down. Because they call that violence because it goes against the narrative, you see? And so you, you have these really pathological situations going on, just like the metropolis I described. And so the only way you're gonna save that society in the sense of helping them renew themselves, in other words, save themselves, see the catch? The only way you're gonna help that society save themselves is by educating them. They have to be able to see, the majority of them at least, have to be able to see the lies. How do you, how do you get someone who has believed a specific kind of science their whole life, how do you get them, say they're, say they're completely down with, um, with uh, evolution. Let's say they're completely down with evolution. Okay? And their whole life, they've grown up with this idea in their head that they come from monkeys. Everything is an involvement. Everything came from nothing for no reason called the Big Bang. And they've bought this idea that the entire universe came from nothing for absolutely no reason. And poof, there's the universe and poof, there are people. How 
how do you convince that person that whole scientific scenario is a lie? Because they don't want to hear any facts that you tell them because that's just going to confuse them. The quote is, don't confuse me with facts. I've already made up my mind. You see, and so you have a really gifted scientist, MIT, gifted person. So you can't, they're not stupid. A gifted person here. Degreed, accredited, renowned by their peers, right? You can't dismiss this. But they're pathologic because they can't learn anything else scientifically as far as where we come from. They have finished that chapter and closed the book. That is decided. This is called an ideology. You conclude the facts as indoctrinated into your mind and then you close the book on that scenario. So where did humans come from in the evolutionist's mind? From monkeys. Case closed. Case closed. Anything that doesn't support that narrative, if you're in this society today, is called violence. It's not called free speech. It's not called free opinion. It's called violence. And so a person who's been indoctrinated in a specific science, and that case is closed, and they consider any alternate theories as violence, what do you have now? A bot. That's that, that's that genius MIT graduate is as far as human origin is concerned. They're a bot. They're gonna carry out the evolutionist narrative that has been programmed into their mind. They're a psychopath. Because anybody that contradicts them they consider a threat, not a means to a wider perspective of where humans came from, but a threat that is to be shut down and gagged, shut up. You see, this is how you indoctrinate stupidity into a society. This is how you crush discernment in a society. This is how you do it, through fear. Why does that MIT graduate, sorry, a truck was stuck on the side of the road. Why does that MIT graduate refuse to learn anything? Because they already know. And that's what makes them a psycho, because they can't learn anything. They're a mental patient. They're equal to a mental patient. They cannot function without the ideology that's been programmed into their head. They're not a free thinker. They can't get outside the box. This is what you have right now in society. That ex that's, that's exactly what you have. And so take that concept and apply it to the whole world. And you have millions, hundreds of millions of people that have been all indoctrinated by the governance, the people who have been in charge of the world. And the people who have been in charge of the world have not had humanity's best interest in mind. They have considered the world to be a farm. People, human beings, by this controlling agency, this controlling group at the top, people are farm animals. They are beings, they are organisms to be exploited to be pilfered. The energy, just like in the matrix, the energy of society is to be sucked out of society itself and used by those at the top. So if I indoctrinate an entire society of people into the beliefs that I want them to believe, I control that society because they all believe and act how I have indoctrinated them. If I'm in charge, right? So if I'm a bad person at the top, what do you think I'm gonna indoctrinate all these people that I control with? I'm gonna indoctrinate them with lies so they never figure out what's going on so I remain in control. And the people are so indoctrinated that even when you tell them, 
that they're being lied to. When you tell them and show them that they're being run by corrupt governments and agencies, they deny it. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result, the result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind, even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid of society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of the uh, of, uh, United States society. And yet these people who have been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, obviously they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. There will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be greatest shock for them, of course. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. So basically America is stuck with, with demoralization and unless, even if, if you start right now, here, this minute, you start educating new generation of Americans, it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality uh, back to normal, no, normalcy and, and uh, patriotism. Most of the American politicians, media and educational system trains another generation of people who think they are living at a peacetime. False. The United States is in a state of war, undeclared total war against the basic principles and the foundations of, of this system. What is your recommendation to the American people? Well, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the immediate thing that comes to my mind is, of course, there must be a very strong national effort to educate people in, in, in the spirit of real patriotism, number one. Number two, to, to explain them the real danger of socialist, communist, whatever, welfare state, big brother government. If people will fail to grasp the impending danger of that development, nothing ever can help United States. You may kiss goodbye to your freedom. At least part of United States population is convinced that the danger is real. They have to force their government. And I'm not talking about sending letters, signing petitions, 
and all this beautiful, noble activity. I am talking about forcing United States government to stop aiding communism. Because there is no other problem more burning and, and urgent than to stop the Soviet military industrial complex from destroying what is, whatever is left of the free world. There are so many innocent people that are indoctrinated with the idea that the governing agencies have their best interest in mind and care about them. That those people don't hear facts, truth, because they already know. Facts confuse those people. Facts cause anxiety in people that are totally bought and sold to a particular type of narrative. That's called ideological subversion. And that's what I talked about in my last video. You have an entire society of people that have been ideologically subverted. Their ideology, remember how I explained ideology earlier in this video? Their ideology, which has been put in them, has been a subversive ideology. Meaning, it's partial truth. I'll give you a great one. Here's a partial truth. A partial truth is that you have the Christ, God, eternality, epiphany within you, right? You have it within you. Okay, so that's truth. But when you're born, you don't have access to it unless you believe in a certain religion. So the truth is that yes, consciousness, higher consciousness is within you. You're born with it. We all have it. And it can be endlessly developed your entire life. The Christ within you. That can be endlessly developed your entire life. That's truth. The lie is you don't have access to it unless you believe in the case of Christianity, unless you believe you're a sinner, unless you believe that you're fallen. Which, what does it do? It subverts the original idea. Because if you believe that you're fallen, you're subverted from the idea that you're born with it already in you. With the higher consciousness, with the Christ within you. That's a subversion. That's an ideological subversion you can do to people. And they'll believe it because they'll fight to stay, sinner, to stay a sinner until the day they die. And a saved sinner is a sinner. You see? This is, this is an indoctrination. Here's, a, here's another one. Here's another one. That you have evolved as a creature. Now, are you the same person that you were when you were born? No. Is society the same society that it was a hundred years ago? No. Is the earth, is the universe the same earth and universe that it was a thousand years ago? No. All of these things have evolved and developed. You, your environment, the planet, the universe. All of these things are in a constant state of emergence and evolvement. So it is true that you are an evolved creature, right? But the lie comes in when, the, when uh, science tries to convince you that you're from nothing for no reason. It's just a big wash a genetic pool and you just so happen to pop up right the subversion dissolves meaning out of you it takes your self-fulfillment from you because you're just a chance accident <laughs> do you see the subversion this keeps you from being able to see yourself as a higher creature because you're just evolved from a monkey so your consciousness, your higher consciousness, has no meaning. Do you see how evolution frustrates? It leeches out of you your humanness, aspects of your character and humanity, namely your higher consciousness, the Christ within you. What's the common thread of these two examples I've given you? They're trying to convince you you're not what you are. They're trying to convince you you are something that you're not. Because if I steal your identity, if I take that from you, I control you. So if you think you're a sinner, you're controlled by the church. 
if you think you're a dirty carbon generator, you're controlled by the science that's handed to you by the evil institutions at the top who are lying to you about being a sinner and are lying to you about being a carbon generator. And they're lying to you about your immune system and that it's not strong enough to take on the diseases that nature develops. They're lying to you. And this disavows you. It devalues you. Because if I believe I'm a dirty carbon generator sinner, I devalue myself. And no matter how many taxes I pay to feel better about being a dirty carbon generator, and no matter how many sins I'm forgiven from, for the sins that I commit, I'm still a sinner and I'm still a dirty carbon generator at the end of the day. No matter how many times I'm forgiven, no matter how many taxes I pay, no matter how many shots I get, I still have too weak of an immune system to take on the world. I've been disempowered. And that's the intention of those at the top. Because if you knew the power that you had, if you knew the strength that you're born with and the consciousness that you carry, if you were aware of these things, you would never submit. You would never buy the lies and the cons. You would never do it because you would know who you are. This is why Alan Watts spent literally his entire career helping, attempting to help others find out for themselves who they are. Because that solves all the problems. When you find out who you are, that right there, that's sol that everything's solved. That's the great awakening. You find out who you are. Because then you won't buy the lies. You won't self-degrade. You won't be dependent on the quote-unquote solutions that they give you for the cons they have programmed into you? Who, who told you that you had to be forgiven? Who told you that? The same church, the same institution that told you you were dirty. The same institution that invented the idea of sin. You see, who told you you're a dirty carbon generator? Scientists did. Who told you you had to pay more taxes because you're a dirty carbon generator? The government did. <laughs> You're controlled. You're dependent on agencies for your behavior. And your motivation is fear because you're not in control of your own life. You're being controlled. And you're being controlled by institutions that don't have your best interest in mind. They have stolen from you through your willingness to be deceived by being convinced that you're a sinner or a dirty carbon generator, they have stolen from you your identity. And the whole way you resolve the metropolis that's sick, the world that's sick, is through self-identity. For every single person to find out who they are. The higher consciousness that is their identity. The Christ within them that is their identity. This is why all of these people, every one of us, I shouldn't say these people because I'm one of them. This is why everyone has a higher consciousness and, and can contemplate a higher reality than a monkey, a lion, a bear, a zebra can contemplate. Their concerns are the lower three chakra. Chakra, survival, security, projection of their power, and procreation. Those are bottom three chakra concerns. You as a human being have higher concerns that are above the heart, that are the heart and above compassion. It starts with compassion at the heart, just above the power projection at the solar plexus. At the heart, that's where love is. Love is the key to the awakening. Loving yourself. How do you love yourself if you don't know who you are? If I, as an evil monster, convince you that you're something that you're not, how are you ever going to love yourself if you're convinced that you're something that you're not? And what is every dirty, dirty carbon generator convinced of? That they're a dirty carbon generator. What's every sinner convinced of? That they're a dirty sinner. You see the pattern? This 
takes this inner power that you were born with away from you and subverts it into harsh things, harsh feelings and senses about yourself that aren't true, that you put there through a programmed mind. Because a sinner is gonna act like a sinner until the day they die, they're gonna think like a sinner until the day they die, because they're convinced they're a sinner. It's the same thing with the dirty carbon generator. If you, you'll, you'll be crying at night about the carbon you think you're generating when you take a breath, if you convinced it with enough fear. Just like you'll be crying at night, thankful for the grace that you think you need because you think you're a sinner. You're controlled agency. You're under control. I'm sorry to tell you this. I know this is really rough news to hear. It was tough news to realize when I realized it. You're a controlled agency, and the psychology that I have explained to you today will help you see, if you contemplate it and think about it, it will help you see where I'm pointing towards. Because I can't lead you there. I can only point to it. You have to find the space I'm pointing to today. And un until you can utilize this aspect of you that is within yourself that you identify with to understand the world, you're not going to find understanding. Understanding comes through searching within. That's why answers are not outside of you. That's why you can't find answers in religion, science, medicine, etc. Because answers come from within. These other disciplines give you clues, but the answer comes from within. And this is why a society that has no self-identity, that identifies through these dirty images of themselves, this is why that society is so hard to awaken. Because they don't want to awaken, because they're convinced of who they are. Because that's been handed to them by those at the top. The only way out is through. That's the only way out is through. There's no magic button, there's no magic pill, there's no magic recipe, there's no magic movie. You will have to search on your own and find those answers courageously because I can't give them to you. All right, I gotta go. I'll see you next time. Bye -bye.